If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. We'll go ahead and draw a picture of this solid uniform sphere. So the large circle in gray represents the solid uniform sphere whose radius is one meter. And then for part A of the question, we have this particle whose mass is m and it's located 1.5 meters from the center of that large gray sphere. And what we want to notice about part A is that this mass, lowercase m, is located completely on the outside of the sphere that we have marked as capital M. And because this small particle is outside of the sphere, that means that the entire mass of the gray solid sphere will contribute to the gravitational force. So let's take a look at the expression for the gravitational force. And in that expression, we have a constant g multiplied by the lowercase mass times the uppercase mass divided by the distance between the two squared. Now, once again, since the particle is located outside of the gray sphere, the entire mass of the gray sphere will be plugged into this equation when calculating the gravitational force between these two objects. We can go ahead and plug in the distance between the center of the gray sphere and this particle m, as well as the constant g and the uppercase m, which again is the mass of the gray sphere. And when we simplify that, we get lowercase m multiplied by approximately 3.0 times 10 to the minus seventh, and then the unit inside this parentheses will be newtons per kilogram. So this would be the expression for the gravitational force acting on lowercase m. Now on to part b of the question, and in this case we're taking that particle whose mass is lowercase m and we're actually moving it a distance that's 0.5 meters from the center of the large gray sphere. The fact that it's at 0.5 meters from the center means that it's actually inside of the solid uniform sphere. And so in that case, when this little particle is inside the larger sphere, we can't use the entire mass of the gray sphere in doing the calculation. Instead, we are supposed to be using the mass of the solid gray sphere that's indicated in the darker gray here. This lighter gray mass will not contribute to the overall gravitational force acting on the particle M. So once again, we need to somehow come up with the mass of the solid uniform sphere, but only the mass that's indicated by this dark gray circle here. We can ignore the lighter gray mass. Now, to find the mass of this dark gray portion of the solid uniform sphere, we're going to take advantage of the fact that the density of the sphere is uniform. And so to find this mass, we can use the expression that the mass is going to equal the density times the volume. So we're going to have to come up with an expression for the volume of this dark portion of the sphere, as well as the density. Now for the density, what we can do is take the total mass of the uniform sphere and divide it by its total volume. And then for this volume, again, that's the volume of just the darker gray portion. So that's going to equal the volume of a sphere, which is going to be 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. Keep in mind that for this radius, we would be referring to this distance right here, which we know is 0.5 meters. For the total volume, we will also be using the expression 4 thirds pi r cubed. But for that radius, that's simply going to be the overall radius of the mass. And we're using the overall radius because we're using the overall mass to calculate the density. And so the overall radius, again, was one meter. So we'll be plugging in one meter for this radius right here. Now, if we look carefully, we can see the 4 thirds pi will actually cancel out. And then when we plug in the total mass, which is 1 times 10 to the minus, excuse me, 1 times 10 to the fourth, and then multiply that by 0.5 cubed, we can see that the mass of the solid gray portion of the sphere is going to be 1,250 kilograms. So that's the mass that we're gonna end up plugging in for part B of the question. And when we compute that, we get lowercase m multiplied by approximately 3.3 times 10 to the minus seventh newtons per kilogram. If your question actually gave you a value for lowercase m, you could plug that in to get the overall force. But for our case, the Final answer to part B is this expression here. And finally, on to part C, which is basically the same as part B, except we're not given a particular distance. We're told that the distance is going to be less than one meter, so 
that means we're once again going to be inside the solid uniform sphere, so we're going to have to proceed in a similar way that we did in part b. That means that the mass that we plug in for uppercase m will once again not be the entire mass, but only the mass that's shaded in gray. And you will recall we found that mass by taking the density and multiplying it by the volume. Now the density of the uniform sphere was found by taking the total mass and dividing by its total volume. Remember with total volume we have to use the radius of one meter because that's the total volume of the sphere. And then for the volume of just the gray portion we would use four thirds times pi times whatever distance that we're being asked to compute the gravitational force for cubed. And so we could simplify by canceling again the four thirds pi and then we're going to be left with the total mass times r cubed. So we'll take this expression and plug that in for the mass m. And then we can see that the r squared will cancel in the denominator and leave just an r in the numerator. And then when we multiply the quantities in the numerator we would get m times r multiplied by 6.67 times 10 to the minus 7. And then the unit here will be newton per kilogram meter. So this would be the correct answer to part C. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe. Remember, you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.